Now that your doctor has prescribed insulin for you, you're going to need to learn how to give it properly. Insulin, a lot of people tell me they don't want to take insulin because they think it's a foreign substance. Your body makes insulin. All we're doing is, it's like hormone replacement therapy. The same thing, way you would take thyroid, any other medication like that. Insulin, again, is produced by the body and you're just replacing what your body's no longer able to make. Now, for many, many years, we actually had animal source insulin. We, got, we obtained insulin from beef and pork. They actually went to the slaughterhouses, got the pancreases, ground up and put them in a bottle. So there's a lot of extra trash in there. Nowadays, all the insulins that we, we have are all human insulin. They've taken a human insulin gene and cloned it over and over and over again to where now we have massive quantities to where people are injecting what your body would normally produce. So we're just, again, simply replacing what you would normally be making. All the insulin that we have nowadays is injectable. They did a lot of studies on inhaled insulin, but it didn't work out. There was a variety of reasons. And there is one company that's still investigating that and researching that area. It's not available on the market just yet. But so you will have to give insulin by injection. Insulin is a being a hormone, a protein, when you put it into the body via the, the GI system, like you would swallow it down, like you would a pill, the body dissolves it. it, it, uh, it um, renders it ineffective. So you have to give insulin by injection. All the, the insulins will come in a vial. There's uh, several different, uh, as I, there are several different varieties or several different types of insulin. There's very quick acting insulin, there's intermediate acting insulin, and there's long acting insulin. Talking to your doctor, your healthcare professional, your diabetes educator, they will help you to determine the one that you think will be, work out best for you. You want to look at, your, again, your lifestyle. What, what time do you normally get up? What time do you, do you eat? Uh, how many meals a day do you eat? What do your snacks look like? So that we can, we can find the right insulin and the right timing to, to fit your lifestyle the best so that we can best manage and keep your diabetes as close to normal as possible for the majority of the time. There's several different syringe sizes that go along with the insulin. You might, that's another thing to talk about, making sure that you know, or if, if you're gonna use a syringe that holds 100 units, all the insulin in the United States has 100 units per cc. Now that's nothing you really need to worry about other than if you travel some, uh, sometimes other countries might have other formulations, but I think pretty much it's pretty much standard nowadays that everyone uses 100 unit insulin. And you'll see on the vials that say U100 insulin. Some of the syringes hold one cc, and this, so that every little line or every little space on here is two units. Some of the syringes have 50 cc, 50 units, excuse me, half a cc or 50 units. Every little line is one. They also have a third of a cc, and so that, again, it holds 30 units. The key is fitting the dose of insulin you're taking with the type of syringe that you need that you can, again, best see and best manipulate and use. On the syringe, there's a couple of different parts to it. You have the actual barrel of the syringe that's marked up with the, with the readings. There's the plunger part, that's the part that moves, and there's the needle part. I would suggest that you get your syringe and kind of play with it to make sure you know what part moves. Because sometimes people, if you've never dealt with this before, it's kind of awkward. Being a nurse, I've done this for years, so I feel very comfortable with it. But again, you need to kind of just play with an empty one just so you can kind of see how this works for you. When your doctor gives you a dose of insulin, and again, if you are on several different kinds, you need to make sure that you've got the right one. Again, there's a long-acting insulin, there's intermediate, there's short-acting. So when you, you might want to somehow label the bottles or always make sure that you read the label when you pick it up so you know what type you've got. Also check for the expiration date on it. Again, pharmacies check that. They're pretty good about making sure that they're giving you the you know, current insulin that's not expired. But I would just check, especially if you have a, an insurance maybe that sends you like three, four, five months worth of time Time, or maybe they give you a whole lot and then you change your the insulin dose, you're not taking as much, so you have some spare bottles laying around. It's usually recommended that the spare bottles be stored in the refrigerator. It just helps to prolong the life a bit. The ones, almost all the insulins that you have now can be kept at room temperature. As long as you're comfortable, I tell my patients your insulin's okay. You don't lock it in the glove compartment of your car during the middle of the summer. You don't keep it in the trunk while you're doing a cross-country trip during the summer or the winter because you don't want your insulin freezing either. But if your insulin's comfortable, you're comfortable. And so the insulins are good for about 28 days or so sitting out on your counter. But again, check with the manu check on the label, check with your pharmacist, especially as new formulations come out and stuff. Sometimes that kind of changes. We most of the insulins are given, uh, there's a, uh, you'll see charts in the different, um, on the internet or you'll see them in books and stuff about the different areas you can give insulin. You usually want to give it in the subcutaneous tissue. The subcutaneous tissue would be the area over your belly, 
on the, on the backs of your arms and then also on your thigh. What you want to do usually is pull that tissue up off of the muscle and give your injection into that. There's a variety of different needles. Some of the needles are a little longer. There's needles that go from 3 16th of an inch up to 5 16th, 5 eighths. Of, so there's a variety. Again, so kind of take a look at that. If you're heavier, you have a little more adipose tissue over your belly area or on your arms, you might want to pick a little longer needle. For small children, say your three-year-old who's very thin and has type 1, or some of the even older people who have type 1 diabetes or tend to be leaner, they might need a very small needle. So again, work with that too, because sometimes that can make some, some changes in um, number one, your compliance with that and how happy you are with giving it, plus with the, uh, the actual absorption of the insulin then. It's usually, it's recommended that when you have your insulin, um, if it's a cloudy insulin, you're gonna wanna make sure you mix it up. There's clear insulins and there's cloudy insulins. Cloudy insulin is usually what they call the NPH type, and you just wanna make sure that you suspend it well by inverting the bottle several times like this or rolling it between your, somehow just make sure that it's all mixed up really well. You don't wanna shake it real hard, because then it makes little bubbles in the insulin. It's, that might get into your syringe. When you're ready to drop your insulin, you wanna take your syringe, making sure again that it, it, you know, it's gonna be able to hold the dose you're taking. This dose only, this syringe only holds 50 units. So of course if I'm taking 60 or 70, this would not be a good syringe to pick. Then you need the 100 uh, unit one. So say that we're gonna take 20 units. You wanna draw down on the syringe to the 20. If you have visual problems, get glasses. You might wanna make sure you're in a well-lighted area. You wanna make, there are some little um, magnifying glasses that you can pop over this that's available at some of your local um, drug stores and stuff to help you with seeing it but it measures to the top of the line. There's a little black plunger on all of them, and you wanna make sure that the empty space above that plunger is the amount of insulin you're supposed to be taking. Then you wanna take it and inject the syringe into the, um, put the needle into your uh, vial, and inject that air in there. A common mistake I see people do is they take the insulin out, take the insulin out. This little vial will hold a thousand units of air and our fluid. As you take fluid out, you have to put air back in or else you'll make like a little pressure cooker inside there. It starts, um, it, it gets to where you can't get the insulin out anymore. So again, make sure you inject air in there. Flip it over and then draw down, however much insulin you want. Now, in this case, we're taking a single dose. So you can go ahead and draw down to 20, 30, 40 units, let it all fill, let the air bubbles go, rise to the top and then readjust it to the 20, okay? When you're done with that, pull it out set down and now you're ready to prepare your skin. There's a bit of controversy in the literature about whether or not you need to actually use alcohol on the skin. Some people say, oh yes, you have to use alcohol. If you're using alcohol, make sure that you let it dry. Because again, oftentimes if you wipe your skin with alcohol and give the injection, you don't let the alcohol dry well, it'll cause, sometimes will cause it to burn and sting. Um, some literature I've seen says alcohol is not necessary. Most people, if you take a, a shower every morning or a shower every night, your skin's clean enough. Again, that's something you might want to discuss with your healthcare provider. If you're immunosuppressed, say that you're taking medications because you had a, a transplant or different things that again cause immunosuppression that makes you more likely to, to get in, catch infections. You might wanna make sure you use some kind of alcohol. But for the average person who's out and around, you're showering every day, you're not cleaning out the horse stables and stuff, and you have a, you know, a fairly clean job where you sit at a desk, it's adequate then just to you use your clean skin. Now there was an article that came out a number of years ago that says some people even actually give their insulin through their clothing. Say you're out at a restaurant or something and you don't wanna to have to get up and excuse yourself or you don't wanna get undressed. I've read articles and people tell me they give their insulin through their clothing. But again, check it with your doctor, see whatever they might recommend. Again, just to make sure that you don't get infections from that.